All right. I'm going to start this up in just a little bit. Still got a couple things that I'm trying to sort out on my end, but basically today it's just going to be a real quick chatting unboxing. We're going to do some comics as well as um, action figures that I've gone ahead and accrued over like the last two months. Some of them just arrived in the mail this morning, just like an hour ago. So we're going to be going over that as well. Just my thoughts and what have you. So yeah, um, thanks for joining in and we'll get started in just a second here. Bear with me. Yeah, we're also going to be discussing a couple of DIY projects that I went ahead and worked on recently. All right. Hey guys, thank you for joining. What's up? Okay. So let's see. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and start with just comic books, just because I've, in comparison to the figures themselves, I think I've definitely gotten a couple more books over the course of this year alone. It's just insane, especially because of Target. Target's been having some insane sales, like buy two, get one free on all of their books, mainly Omnis. That's how I've gotten so many of these back here and whatnot. But um, the last two months, I definitely did a couple of big book orders. I really wanted to go ahead and complete the collection that I was trying to shoot for. I'm s still a work in progress, but I got a lot more stuff um, on their way and whatnot. So let's see. Uh, I guess I'll start with these. So, Full Metal Alchemist, they have been doing these Full Metal hardcover editions. So I picked up um, volumes 11, 12, 13, and 14 recently. Volume 15 has already been hitting the shelves. Um, in some stores as well as websites. I haven't picked that one up yet, but I definitely got these to round out my collection. I think there's a total of 18 of these um, that are already completed in Japanese, of course, but I never actually read the Fullman Alchemist manga. I watched both the original anime followed by Brotherhood, which this is based off of, but haven't read the manga itself, so I'm going to do a read-through of it once all the volumes come out. Um, so I'm really looking forward to these. And I really like it when they like just do hardcovers for manga. Well, hardcover anything. I mean, if they were to do this for Dragon Ball, that'd be so dope. Or for even Naruto, i just rebuy everything again. Dragon Ball had the um, full-color editions, but... Those stopped production, at least in the U.S., so they had the Saiyan Saga and then the Frieza Saga, and that was it. They didn't complete anything else, which was a bummer. And they were oversized, so to speak, um, but they were paperback as well, so I would kind of would like them to dish something out in hardcover or at least continue with the full colors, even though I sold those off because what's the point in really collecting something that's incomplete? But... Anyway, that's besides the point. These are really nice. Not your typical, like, manga style page. You know, definitely slicker, thicker. And has a couple, like, little excerpts in here that have uh, color pages and whatnot. Like, towards the beginning is, for example, here's, like, one page. It's got some color in it. But, yeah. So, caught up with these guys. These are the first on the list. And they just look really, really nice on the shelf, especially like the spines. They got that little shine to them. I don't know, I just, I'm a sucker for when things look really good on the shelf. So, that's number one. Uh, number two. Let's see. We have the Justice League of America by Brad Meltzer, Deluxe Edition. Um, this is something that I read part of the run back in the day. Um, I had one hardcover that was, I think maybe like the first portion of this book. It was 
um, something to the effect of a story regarding the red tornado, like the tornado's path, something like that. And I thought it was a really good story, at least as far as I remember, because that was probably like 10 years ago that I read it. But I really liked it, and it turns out, well, they had a deluxe edition, which included that story as well as the rest of that particular run. So I'm looking forward to reading this as well. Um, here's a look about the dust jacket. It's got a nice little wrap around cover going on. Here's the inside as well. Really nice stuff. But this will be one of the next ones on my reading list, especially since it's just a, it's a smaller one compared to the Omnis, of course. So this is probably going to be like a day or two's read, depending on how fast I decide to go about it. So there's that one. Uh, going through a little fast, but I don't want to keep you guys for too long. I've been meaning to do a live session for quite some time, but figured, you know what, let me just hold off for a little while to like get a couple more things and go from there. All right, next, Spider-Man, Todd McFarland. Omnibus. I I want to say this is definitely the skinniest, thinnest Omni that I have in my collection, which is fine, you know, it's fine. But also looking forward to reading this. Um, I have the paperback for the first arc, um, Torment with the Lizard, that is collected in here as well. I um, read that some time ago. Haven't read anything else um, from his run. Uh, so I am looking forward to rereading that as well as the rest of this. Take some inspiration from the poses and fight scenes and whatnot for photography, of course. And that's actually something that I've been doing um, more of recently with my read-throughs is if I see a fight scene that I like, um, I'll go ahead and just take a picture of it right then and there. And yeah, thanks, Plastic. <laughs> um, I'll take a picture of the fight scene or whatever interaction it is and try to recreate it with the figures that I have, as well as um, any dialogue or word bubbles. If I see a word bubble that I like, and not necessarily that I can use in a picture right then and there for something that I'm trying to recreate specifically, but that I can use that word bubble in any type of photo, just like a, like a one that I can just use for any type of figure that I have, I'll also take a picture of that word bubble and use it in the photography itself. I've kind of st steered clear from the actual physical cutouts um, recently. I was trying to incorporate those a little bit more, and this is going off tangent, but I just, the way I was trying to do it wasn't working out for me personally all too well. And sometimes like when I would have the cutout in the picture, it would fall off or there would be a weird glare that's hitting it. And I just, I couldn't make it work sometimes to the, to the best of my ability. So I went ahead and tried a different route, which as mentioned, is what I set up, taking the pictures of the word bubbles or anything and doing it, well, through PixArt, um, the phone app. And that's basically the only thing that I've been using at all. Um, I think, actually, I think since I really started my photography, it's just really been that app. I've never gotten a camera, it's always been through my phone. But I learned a new t technique through PixArt, which was to you know, crop out the word bubble itself, highlight it as best as possible to make it look, you know, poppy, so to speak, um, and incorporate it into the photo um, and just have it there. So any of the more recent photos that you've seen that I've done with word bubbles or just any type of dialogue, it has, it's not an actual physical cutout. It's one that I've incorporated there, but it's, it works. It looks cleaner. It's definitely... A lot easier to manage than the physical ones trying to put them into place and get that distance that you need for it to look good um, but yeah it's worked out a million times better than I would have imagined it so it, yeah there's a little hack right there if you're trying to do for photos anyway <laughs> back to the book so looking forward to reading this on me as mentioned um, we're gonna go on to the next one real quick here so the next ones that are on my list, it's kind of like dive. It's, it's going to be diving into something that I've never really um, read before. 
I guess number one being Superman. I've never really read much Superman. So that's why some of the ones that I have recently picked up include this one right here. So we have Superman by Grant Morrison, um, New 52 run, at least part of the New 52 run. And this is the good edition, so to speak, not the one that's got the blank pages with no dialogue. So got a good copy. Looking forward to reading this as well as mentioned. I don't really read much Superman uh, or any Superman. Like, the only Superman that I have read includes Unchained, Superman Unchained by Scott Snyder. And then I have uh, Superman Secret Origins by Jeff Johns. But that's pretty much it. Like My Superman knowledge is not really there. So I am looking forward to cracking into this as you know, just starting off something to read in regards to the character. And the one right next to it, this one right here, is a one that I picked up a little, a couple months back um, as well. But it's uh, Superman by Peter J. Tomasi and Patrick Gleason. So I'm going to read that after the New 52 run. But these guys, something that I'm really looking forward to. I've always enjoyed jumping into something that I'm not knowledgeable about, at least like when it comes to like, you know, my hobbies, the characters and whatnot. The problem is, I know, <laughs> as soon as I jump into reading this, I'm going to be like, oh, where's that Moffix Superman? I need it now. <laughs> so not looking forward to that part because I'm going to want the figure and what have you, but I am looking forward to reading these. Oh, I also have read the entirety of the, the Death of Superman, the that original story. So I think that Omni is getting reprinted um, May of this year. So I'm going to have to snag that as well. I think it actually comes out on my birthday, which is pretty dope. So I'm going to get pick that up as well. Have it, reread it, enjoy it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Really big collection. Stuff is falling over. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I'm going to get that in May. And well, I'm screwed because then I'm going to want that Moffat Superman. But yeah, yeah, Transformers. And that's going to bring me, I'm going to talk about Transformers in a second as well. So stay tuned. Um, okay, so next on the list of stuff that I've never really read before, but I'm looking forward to reading. That is going to be... X-Men. I don't know. Squat. I mean, you gotta start somewhere, right? So, um, in this, I uh, picked up these guys. So I have the first one right here. The second one is right behind me as well. Volumes 1 and 2, X-Men, Chris Claremont, Jim Lee. Um, to be honest, I don't really read, um, much Marvel. Uh, video game. Wait, pause, pause. Video game. Which video game? Transformers or <laughs> you're typing too fast, bro. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, X Men. So uh, never read anything X Men, much less my Marvel knowledge outside of the movies is slim. Uh, the only real Marvel character that I've cared for is just Spidey, Spider Man. So and even then, I haven't really read much Spider Man. It's just more of a general understanding of the character, things that I seen throughout the years and just stuff that I've looked up. The one and only true Spider-Man run that I have finished from beginning to end is Ultimate Spider-Man, which is one of the books that I have on pre-order is the Volume 1 Omni that is being reprinted. Granted, I have them all in paperback, but I want me that hardcover. So, um, Spidey, in that sense, has been the only Marvel character, and that's why I'm trying to like expand my horizons when it comes to more Marvel, so I'm picking up a lot more Marvel comics, Spider-Man, since he's my favorite, and trying to expand into X-Men. So, um, I'm gonna jump into this. Probably not the best starting off point for X-Men, but then again, when I started reading comic books, for example, with DC, the very first DC comic um, that I went ahead and picked up on was Final Crisis with the death of Batman. So there's really no good where, or good starting point, should I say. Uh, well, there are, but I mean, it depends on like where you are in that space point. Like that, that I was nowhere 
in my knowledge space of uh, DC Comics, my friend just recommended, hey, check this out. And I didn't know any better, so I just read it. So I might not know any better with X-Men. So yeah. Uh, anyway, let's see. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Well, let's see. No, um, I don't think I've actually played them before reading the comment right now. So yeah. I mean, I play video games, but not a whole lot unless I'm like super invested in it. Like right now I'm playing Ori. I just finished uh, Ori and the Blind Forest and I'm playing through the second game, uh, Will of the Wisps. But the ones you're mentioning now, I haven't actually played, unfortunately. So sorry. <laughs> but so I'm going to jump into these guys. I also um, ordered uh, some figures from the Moffix line that I'm looking forward to for X-Men preemptively because I know I'm going to like them. So jump into this and go from there. Uh, okay. Next talking point, Transformers. So this year, I got super heavily invested into Transformers. But I mean stupidly invested. I bought way too many figures all at once and books all at once. And that's going to be this next portion. Like, I'm not going to be able to pull every single one of them out of the shelf to go over. But um, I did completely finish phase one of IDW's Transformers. So I'm currently on phase two. I'm like, almost done with volume one of phase two. I had to take a little break from it. I was just like super tired of reading Transformers stuff for a while. But jump back into it. I'm finishing off volume one. I have volumes two, three, and then it just kind of goes random after that. As mentioned, I just went ahead and jumped ship with Target's buy two, get one free sales on all of their books. So I just picked up any volume that they had just because I know I'm going to need it in my collection. Not necessarily to read it right now, but I'm going to need it later on. So, you know, why miss out that on, on that opportunity? So after volume three, we have five, six, 11, and 12, and if my understanding is correct. It seems that IDW has a, um, after phase two, they have fight phase three, of course, but there's a second Transformers run that runs alongside it that is completely separate from their phase series. So picked up volumes one, two, and three from that other series as well. So here's volume three outside of the phase IDW ones. So this is a, uh, all fall down, volume three. But yeah, as mentioned, I had to take a little break from Transformers. Just a lot of shows and reading happened all at once. So I got super burnt out. But um, these are still on my reading list, that's for sure. Just pausing on that. Okay, let's see. Uh, Omnis, I, off to the far side over here, um, one of the more recent ones that I also picked up on that I haven't read at all is the, uh, Batman by Paul Dini on the bus. We also have Batman by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale, um, includes the long Halloween, some other key stories that I haven't read on. So I am looking forward to cracking those Omnis open. What's up? Thank you for joining. So, yeah, uh, there's those. And now, the one that I... <laughs> oh, oh, wait, before we get into that one, I still also have to read Gotham Central. Right there, boom. Got that, and shortly after was notified that they were reprinting it. <laughs> coming out later this coming year, but whatever. I didn't pay that much of a premium for it. I was actually really excited that I got it for the price that I, de that I did, so it's fine. I am looking forward to reading it though, considering it's uh, Ed Brubaker. I mean, I love me some Ed Brubaker books. Kill or Be Killed, Criminal, Fatal, Fade Out. Got a whole little section down here just of his stuff. So I am really excited to get into Gotham Central. That probably will be the next um, Omni that I'll read just because I've been really excited for it for far too long. So as soon as I finish volume one of Phase Two Transformers, I'm going to open that one up and start reading it. Okay. Now, the last book on 
this talking list I just got this morning, like an hour ago. Just got it in the mail. And that is Batman Volume 2 from the New 52. Yes, love this. I was super excited when they solicited this book out just because I was like, you, you can't just do a volume one. You have to finish the run. But finally came out, got it from uh, Cheap Graphic Novels. First time ordering from Cheap Graphic Novels as well. Um, I love the fact that they are taking pre-orders and this is by chance not a sponsor or anything like that. Like, like no. But um, first time that I've gone ahead and ordered from them. And yeah, they're doing pre-orders as mentioned. Um, unlike most pre-orders where you get charged when the item ships out, you get charged right there on the spot with these guys, which I, I mean, it's understandable, you know, they want to make sure that they are dishing out the products and not having cancellations on said products. So if you want the books, you're going to have to commit to it right then and there. Which is still okay. I mean, they are at a much more significantly discounted rate than, um, let's say, even Amazon. Well, this has a cover price of 125 I think I got it for 75 I want to say maybe 80 And I also pre-ordered um, the Ultimate Spider-Man Volume 1 Omnibus as well. So, got that on pre-order. But... Ooh, connection's bad? Ah, uh, damn. I'm sorry. It doesn't seem to be telling me otherwise on my end, but hopefully it resolves itself. <laughs> but, yeah. So, looking forward to rereading this um, second half of the New 52 run um, shortly as well. And go from there. Okay. Alrighty. Let's see. So, when it comes to figures... I'm going to be showcasing a couple figures that I've already had for some time as well, but I've been reusing just because they're a lot of fun. Um, you know, as mentioned with the new techniques that I've been doing with photos and what have you, I'm just like really, really enjoying using these guys at this point in time. So I'm not going to go into too much depth on those. Um, but I'm just going to show them off. So, of course, we got Moffix, Batman Hush. So, blue version. The black version went on pre-order once more, so I definitely uh, set that up for myself just because I missed out, unfortunately. And that was... <laughs> Alex was going to order that for me this uh, year for my birthday, and like literally less than two hours later when I was like, okay, yeah, let's do it, let's do it. It sold out, I was like, no! <laughs> so I missed out on the black version, but yeah, so... Yep, best Batman figure that I have. Probably the only one. I have a McFarlane Earth 2 Thomas Wayne Batman, but I don't really like the articulation on it. And I have a... Oh, yeah, I also have a Mesco Batman, but... Mm, mm, at least the one that I have. Nah, that's, that's what? Ascending Knight? Nah. But best Batman figure. Okay, moving on. So... This is one that I've had for some time as well. It's uh, Mafex Spidey. Had this guy for a couple months, thanks to my buddy Ricky. Gifted this bad boy to me. So I recently started doing more Spidey picks, as you guys may have been seeing. Um, one thing that I did uh, work on for this guy is I panel lined him a little bit more, just because when I got this guy, which is one of the more recent ones, the Ben Riley Spidey, I just the lines, the webbing on him definitely pop out more than they did on Peter Parker's Spider-Man over here. So I went ahead and panel lined him a little bit more and I think it definitely helped out. Um, he definitely stands out a little bit more than, or a lot more in my opinion, than what he did originally. So he's competing with Ben over here. And I have to I have to put Ben to use. I haven't taken a single picture with Ben. Like, every single one that I've done more recently has still been with this guy right here. But I do have an idea for a photo to work on with both of these Spider-Men in one go. And I'm going to pin him up against this guy, who I also just got. Lizard. We took a trip to 
Phoenix, Peoria, those areas here in Arizona. Went to Retro Exchange, and they happened to have this bad boy, which I had been wanting for some time. He was expensive. And I think I learned my lesson, honestly. Like, if I really want to build a figure, I guess I'm just going to have to buy every single figure in the wave, even though I don't want the specific figure that the piece comes with, but it's probably going to be the cheapest alternative than paying for the build a figure on its own or the loose pieces. But, in any case, I have him, finally. So, looking forward to using him in some pictures. Like I said, I'm going to have him versus the two Spideys. So, um, keep a lookout for that photo. And, moving on to the next figure, as Alex put it, from my purchase that day, I got two green dudes wearing white cloaks and purple pants. So, that brings me to the next figure, also purchased at Retro Exchange, which is the new SH Fig Yards Piccolo. So, needed this guy. Finally got him. I really like him. I never owned the original Fig Yards Piccolo, so I am going to go ahead and work on some photos soon of him as well. I want to see if I can go to one of our parks here in Tucson and pose him up in front of like a waterfall doing his Zen meditation. So, Piccolo. Alright. Uh... Two more figures that I acquired within the last month or so are Moffix Carnage as well as Moffix Venom. Alright, once more, thank you, D Amazing, for these guys. Um, also, have Cyclops on the way from him. But yeah, these guys, gotta work on some more pictures of them. I've only they will let me be one or two that I can think of that have used them so far. So, I'm excited to shoot that up as well as use uh, some of the webbing that I redesigned with like just bendy wire and whatnot. Some of the webbing that I had made a couple years ago just was trash. <laughs> At the time it looked amazing to me but now I was like, oh no, this is garbage. <laughs> Sorry. Undid them all, uh, spun them around a bit, and I think they look a lot better. So I have a four of different sizes that I went ahead and made. So two on the longer end, two on the shorter end, for swinging around and just shooting at em enemies. So I'm gonna put these to use. All right, let's set that aside. Let's see. Um, I guess we'll continue on the DIY portion real quick and get back into the last portion of the figures that I picked up recently. So I went ahead and, as you may have seen, got a big old roll of 12 gauge galvanized wire and have attempted to make some flight stands for myself. I mean, it's not perfect of course it looks kind of garbage but it does its job you know it's, it stands flat holds the weight of the figures and I did want to get some um, heat shrink like um, was like a plastic or rubber to put it as end caps but I thought you know what I have some hot glue so I try to bootleg this a bit and I actually just did a layer of like hot glue and let it cool down and it I mean stayed on tried it out real gently with the figures and it works just as good, honestly, so, yeah. So, this is my first attempt at making one. I'm going to try making a couple more later down the line. Um, there are several videos on YouTube, so I'm sorry if I don't plug in those videos specifically, but um, that's I just searched out make flight stand, metal flight stands, and there were a couple that popped up, and that's where I got the idea for these specifically. Uh, moving on are... These like type of scaffoldings that I went ahead and made. I posted about it recently as well, asking if anybody knew where I can get some scaffolding that looked like this outside of having to buy these big old WWE ring sets because for, they're expensive, honestly. At least to me they are because I'm not going to use it to the full extent that someone that likes WWE would, right? So... Plus, they only bring like four pieces. So, 
looked online and I did put a plug to the specific video some time ago when I first um, when I made the first one of these uh, but this is just all all made of um, wooden barbecue skewers just cut up glued together with some hot glue and spray painted and honestly I mean it doesn't look too bad at least to me you know they stand as well just fine lean them against each other and whatnot for background props and to the naked eye it might look a little messy maybe with the hot glue but I think that's part of the charm as well because once you apply that spray paint it just kind of looks like where the metal is welded together so I just think it looks pretty dope honestly so I finished the second one last night so I'm gonna be using these as background pieces and some photos I still want to make a couple more maybe like two more in the meantime um, it is a little time consuming um, even with having the process down to a T on how many pieces you need and what have you to make it specific like this is still the one that I worked on last night maybe took me like an hour and a half to complete from beginning to end and spraying it down but yeah that's some another little project that I worked on um, accessories I had also been wanting a couple more accessories for my photos and sets which I decided to pull the trigger and snag these off Amazon I think they're directly linked with the uh, WWE Superstore so you got a green dumpster to scale or six inch figure so it's a 112 scale it didn't look like this originally it was just straight up green I did have some like decals that I plopped on there to look like graffiti and gave it a black wash to give it like the grimy look but yeah got one of these figures can fit in there just nicely if you want to dump them in there just like one of the pictures that I took last night that I'll be posting shortly but got this green dumpster really awesome nice background piece as well as a set of three little trash cans also didn't look exactly like this they were just a flat like gray but I sprayed them down with a gunmetal color could move the tops on them so this was like a bundle pack it brought three little trash cans and the green dumpster um, can't remember the exact price but like I said it was on Amazon so you just have to check on there if you're interested but yeah I was also thinking of making um uh, mini trash bags so like actually get like a piece of a black trash bag and stuff it a little bit and just put a tie on it so to speak so it looks like a miniature trash bag to go with the mini trash cans for background pieces so I'll probably be doing that sometime soon as well so you'll see that shortly um, this is kind of a random it's not really a figure per se I don't even really collect amiibos but I couldn't pass on the fact that I actually came across the Metroid Dread set, so I decided to just pick it up. Um, I will be opening this and taking some pictures of said Amiibos um, eventually, but yeah, came across it, so I couldn't pass it up, so there's that. Okay, now these were kind of an impulse buy, and because of said impulse buy, I got the idea of wanting another specific figure, which we'll go over shortly, and that, these impulse buys are these Harley Davidson 112 scale motorcycles. So, really nicely detailed. Works well with most uh, six inch figures um, that I have tried so far, at least. So, this one right here is, uh, according to the box, a 2014 Sportster. Iron 8A3, don't know what that, well, it's this, but that's just jargon to me. So, got this black one. I also picked up this nice metallic blue one right here. Really nice. And this candy apple green one. Haven't cracked these open yet, but I just thought they looked really dope. And they were $10 each at Target. I thought that was awesome. I don't know. Compared to Amazon, because I also looked them up on Amazon, Amazon had them for like 20 or upwards. They actually showed slash price from $40, which I was like, what? 
what? There were tongue marks. But this one's definitely the one that caught my eye. I mean, it just looks sexy. And because of seeing this, I was like, damn, I wish I had the John Wick action figure from MoffX. And well, guess what? John Wick made his way home today as well. So we have John Wick from Chapter 2. I was pleasantly surprised that I randomly came up on him on FYE's website for base price. That's insane. I just wouldn't have expected it to appear on there. And it was through a Google search because I didn't specifically go on to FYE and search for him. Which, by the way, when I did do it specifically in that fashion, he wouldn't pop up. Type in John Wick or Moffex and he just doesn't come up at all. So, if you Google search John Wick, um, Moffix John Wick, he will appear on the FYE page, and he was in stock. I mean, shit, look, here he is. I will say I was kind of bummed out. Like, two days after I made the purchase, he went on sale for 20% off. You may have seen the post that I put up there, which is a real big letdown because initially, I tried to get him at a discount rate from signing up for the newsletter, but it turns out the 20% off excludes certain figures. Okay, understandable. Two days later, there's a 20% off sale site-wide, including on this guy. And I'm like, oh, bro. Message customer service, see if I could get the difference refunded if at all possible. And less than 24 hours later, again, the sale ends. And because of the ever-changing sales cycle, from what I was told by a representative, that's why I wasn't able to get the difference refunded, which is a bummer. It was a bummer. But still, I didn't have to pay a premium for him. He was standard price, so I am looking forward to taking pictures of John Wick with this Harley. I think it's going to look super good. So that's next on the agenda. And I guess the last thing on this particular unboxing slash talking session is this beautiful boy, Kamen Rider Darkiva. Now, I did already open this guy, I just couldn't resist, and boy, the colors on this guy are so nice. I mean, look at that. The reds, those beautiful turquoise eyes, <laughs> and the cape too. cape is really, really nice, got those nice wrinkles wired in some areas as well really really cool so I'll be doing some pictures of this guy shortly to probably incorporate the scaffolding that I made mm -hmm. and yeah but that's that's it right there so that pretty much sums it all up um, between the comic books and figures that I've accrued over the last couple of months and literally up until this morning like an hour ago um, you will be seeing more photos of said figures um, shortly. I did do one yesterday and will be doing some either later today or tomorrow. Haven't been as active because of the October ACBA challenge of doing a photo for every single day of October, which is the most I have ever done. Um, 31 days straight, so I had to definitely have like a set amount of pics done. Uh, preemptively for the days to come for the entire month so that kind of burned me out but I am looking forward to working with the stuff that I just got right now and go from there but anyway thank you so much for joining me in this little chat session and I'll catch you guys in a couple more months when we've gotten some more stuff All right later